it's just bizarre. I mean, to throw the first words out of his mouth is because he went to a good college. I mean, that has absolutely nothing to do with mental stability or uh, or anything that he was uh, responding to. It was just kind of. Uh, an indication of how scatter, scatterbrained uh, this is. I, I'm reminded of the, the David Brooks line when he said that um, Donald Trump's mind is like six fireflies bat rattling around in a jar. And that's kind of the way he sounds when he's addressing these things. You know, I understand that you spoke with that Yale psychiatrist, Dr. Bandy Lee, about her observations about the president last month. What kind of new information did you learn and did it change how you view this president? No, not not really. I think what what uh, I learned from Dr. Lee was that after 20 years of studying the mental uh, the mental characteristics of violent tendencies, that she and many other psychiatrists and psychologists have seen a pattern of behavior in President Trump that is consistent with uh, people who have a tendency toward violence, and that she, in her professional capacity, and these other psychologists and psychiatrists think it's their professional obligation to warn the public about the dangers that uh, he poses, the President Trump poses. So I think virtually anyone who watches the president closely and who reads the tweets and who listens to his speeches and his public appearances kind of comes comes away with the same observations, but she put a professional framework around it and uh, now, can, can put I it in perspective though, as to why we should be concerned. And, and okay, but there's a difference between violence and you know kind of nuts or unhinged or whatever. I mean, when she says violence, did she describe what she meant by that? No, just that that um, if you combine the the impulsiveness and the what they call the the hedonism that uh, President Trump exhibits. In other words, that he lives only in the moment. He doesn't consider hmm. the consequences of his words or actions that that combined with his power uh, poses a very uh, dangerous situation. So we had reaction from the American Psychiatric Administration saying it's unethical to offer a professional opinion of a public figure if they have not been personally evaluated. So is it fair to ramp up these attacks on the president based on nothing more than speculation? I mean, look, he was a reality TV host. You know that what you see on TV is not the same as what happens behind the scenes necessarily. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm not going to comment on the American Psych Psychiatric Association or their standards. I know what uh, Dr. Lee and the 26 other mental health professionals who wrote the book, uh, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, said. And they said, we are not actually presuming to diagnose him. What we are saying is we have observed patterns of behavior that we have observed over many years, hmm. and this causes us grave concern, and that we have a professional obligation to warn people. So they, they specifically say they're not trying to diagnose him. They're basically just saying we have concerns because of his behavior. Patterns that they're seeing. Okay, glad for clarifying mm -hmm. that. Um, uh, you are certainly the top Democrat on the House Budget Committee, and we know the president is seeking $18 billion for a border wall, which he demands must be part of any potential deal with Democrats on the DACA program, which Democrats are now saying, you know, that's a non-starter. Strategists have suggested to me that both parties could walk away happy by giving Trump a wall in name only, and then walking away with some sort of a path to citizenship for dreamers. Is is there a way that you could expand the definition of a border wall to come to some sort of an agreement? Actually, there is. I, I was on the uh, so-called Gang of Eight in 2013, mm -hmm. with trying to put together a bipartisan uh, immigra comprehensive immigration proposal, and we dealt with the issues of border security. And when you talk about uh, defending the integrity of the borders, uh, as opposed to a specific uh, physical manifestation of that, uh, you actually d leave plenty of room for negotiation and compromise. Uh, we, we talked about this at length in those meetings and talked about the combination of electronic uh, detection and drones and, and personnel and barriers. And I've been to the border, I've talked to the Border Patrol, and what they say is that uh, actual physical barriers make some sense in some places, make no sense in other places, that all they do is slow down the progress of uh, someone trying to get in, get across the border. But if you're out in the middle of the desert, 100 miles away from any city, you have days and days 
to actually apprehend somebody who comes in illegally if you detect them. And you can detect them again with, with different types of devices. So, yeah, I think there's plenty of room for compromise on this. The president just needs to get off of this absolute commitment to a physical barrier mm -hmm, stretching mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of miles. Yeah, and you know, I spoke with your colleague from the opposite side of the aisle, Charlie Dent of Pennsylvania, earlier today, and yes. he said exactly that. The president is one that's ratcheting up this rhetoric saying, we're going to build a beautiful big wall 20 <laughs> feet high. And he says, the reality is that's not what anybody on Capitol Hill is talking about. Never mind people in the heartland <laughs> or along the borders who actually are envisioning a wall, thanks to the president. He says it's all about an operational wall. That So is that right. what you were talking about? It's not necessarily the physicality of a wall. <laughs> Exactly right. I think I actually was watching. So he, he talked about operational control of the borders, uh, which is exactly what we're talking about. Charlie's a very, very smart guy. And uh, if he were in control, we'd have a deal very, very quickly, I think. See, I like bipartisanship. Charlie's a Republican. You're a Democrat. It's all good. All right. Thank you so much, Sean Yarmouth. Always good to see you. Appreciate it. Hey there. I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.